One of the weirdest characteristics of quantum mechanics, which was revealed back in the 1930s, so now a long time ago, is that you can have a particle over here and a particle over there. And you can set these particles up in such a way that if you do an experiment on one, it has an effect on the other, regardless of how far apart the particles are. So just to give you a, a concrete example, particles all have a quality known as spin. The details don't matter, but basically a particle can spin this way, which we call spinning up, or that way, which we call spinning down. So a particle can spin up or spin down, but the weirdness of quantum mechanics is a particle can be in a mixture of spinning up and down at the same time, right? Now, if you have two particles, imagine them both in this funny mixture spinning up and spinning down at the same time. Now what quantum theory says is if you measure one particle over here, it will always snap to attention, either be up or down when you look at it. But what about its partner far away? Imagine this particle's in New York, this one's here in Los Angeles. So you got these particles doing this, someone measures the particle in New York, it snaps to attention and spins up. The math says that the one in LA at that moment will snap to attention and spin down, even though you didn't do anything to it. All you did was measure its partner over here in New York. Einstein called that spooky. Right? Spooky action at a distance. So these two particles, even though they're far apart, they somehow in a quantum mechanical way talk to each other. Now how can you leverage that into teleportation? Well, if there's something I want to teleport, I can bring it next to this particle in New York, allow them to commingle. Through their commingling, that's sort of like an experiment, properties of the particle I want to teleport get imprinted on the particle in Los Angeles. And then, with a little extra detail, and that's where quantum mechanics, the math, comes into the story, I can manipulate this particle to make it an exact copy of the particle that I wanted to teleport. And weirdly, the particle that I wanted to teleport, because it commingled, it gets affected, it gets changed. So the original no longer even exists. So the only version of the original is this one in Los Angeles. So in some sense, I took the particle from New York and I made it appear in Los Angeles. I have teleported it. That's the essential idea. That's one particle. Your question was, what would, it, what would it take to do many particles? Well, we'd have to have a huge number of these entangled particles and be able to bring, say, the human being and have the human being commingle with this collection of particles that are entangled with the ones in LA and somehow be able to measure every single particle in the human being, how it commingles with this huge number of particles in the raw material, and then somehow be able to use that information to manipulate a huge number of particles in Los Angeles. It's the huge number problem that gets in the way of doing it.